you know, it's it's such an observational film, right? And uh, and and for our money, simply observing and doing a good job of that and doing a nuanced and detailed job of observing what's going on in the California desert is, you know, 90% of our work, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I think that there's an assumption that, at least in Europe, that, that American documentaries that deal with the war are going to be, uh, are going to be um, Michael Moore or Errol Morris style films, that they're going to come with an agenda, that they're going to come with their knives sharpened and ready to slice and dice and tell you what to feel about something. And our film is um, so much more complex and, and nuanced. And it's not saying you have to feel that way or you have to feel this way. I mean, I like to think that you can feel, um, you can feel horror and admiration at the same time. And we have political points of view and we have feelings about the war. And I think those are expressed in the film, um, but I think it requires the audience to do some of that work for themselves. Um, so I think I'm very comfortable with the fact that my point of view is, is embedded in the story of that of our film of, of Full Battle Rattle, but I think it's, it, it's um, not as clear as maybe some people would, would like it to be. Our movie raises questions about what is real, you know? Is, is this simulation any less real than a real village? You know, one of the points the movie makes at some point is that what emerges in this place, on this stage set, becomes a real living and breathing village, that there are relationships there that, 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 that are as true as any relationship you find in any other community anywhere else. We, we make films and character-driven films, and for me the strongest political films are where the politics emerge out of the personal. And, and mm -hmm. I think you know, we wanted to make a film that was ultimately about people who, who, who work in this bizarre place, the army simulation, but they're, but they're still people, and, and if we could connect with them and understand what brought them together, Iraqi exiles and U.S. soldiers, Iraqis fleeing Iraq and Americans going to Iraq, and they meet in the middle in this very bizarre place. I mean, if we could understand um, kind of this, you know, army, if we could understand the simulation from, from their point of view, I think we, we hope we could tell a good story that people could, could relate to and connect with. There's sort of the on-stage component, and then there's the off-stage component, using kind of a theatrical idiom, right? And um, we quickly realized that for the soldiers, there is no off-stage, you know? So are they playing roles, or aren't they playing roles? Well, regardless, there is no, there is no off-stage moment for them, because they're always in character, right? Um, yes, they're wearing uniforms, right? Are those costumes, or are they not costumes? Regardless, you know, uh, Lieutenant Freeman is always Lieutenant Freeman. Right, um, Bassam Kolosho, who plays the part of the deputy mayor, is Bassam Kolosho, and then he becomes Ludfri Mansour. You know, so so for the Iraqis, there was a really clearly defined onstage and offstage experience. Right, we were um, as filmmakers attracted to the role players who who brought a lot of conviction to their to their roles, and and like the deputy mayor, um, uh, Bassam Kolosho. I mean, he. When he switched it on, he was in it, and I think that's why he, he sort of assumed a prominent role uh, in the simulation. He, he's one of their most valuable role players, if you will, because he, you know, he brings it all. I feel sadness for a fake place, you know. It's kind of beautiful.